welcome person who is interested in using artifice to create cards. In particular, I'm going to address creating cards for Deep Future, but there's nothing stopping you from using artifice to create cards for other games as well. So let's get started. Uh, in particular, I'm going to be creating a tech card that goes along with my most recent game. In that game, I used the Planet Vogue Sphere from Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. So I figured that I'd give an overview of what the card looked like in general. It's got the suits up top, the different advances down at the bottom, a little bit of flavor text as well. So uh, l let's actually create a particular tech card that goes along with this that I haven't completed yet. I am going to create a new card. So the add button right up at the top does that for me. You'll notice there's a difference in the coloring of the card. There's nothing labeled. That's going to be all up to us. So in particular, I am creating a tech that goes along with the Vogons from the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. And it is the quite unwieldy experimental sublimation torpedo. Now, as you can imagine, that particular name is too long for the card name room that we've got available to us. So we're actually going to use what's called a backronym. Now that is a little research that I did as a result of my playing Deep Future. So uh, the, the backronym is Quest, and that goes along with quite unwieldy experimental sublimation torpedo. And I, I don't usually do this in tech cards, but because I like the name so much, I'm going to put a little asterisk up there, and I'm going to put the flavor text down at the bottom that actually puts the full name in there. Now you'll notice as I start typing everything out, it's showing up on the card itself, so you can see if you've made any errors, you can do your copy editing as you go along. And I am an incredibly slow typer, especially when I'm talking. So I've got that down. Um, one, of, one of the cool things is when I start entering hard returns, that flavor text is actually going to move around and I can see it happening on the card. So it kind of makes the layout quite a bit easier than it would be otherwise. This card was from my fifth era. So I'm going to put era five. Naturally, you can label the cards any way you want. If you want to put the era up top card name down here, you certainly can. There's a couple of limitations of the software, and I'm sure I'll mention them as we go through. This is the little bit that was a little bit tricky. I actually am not a user of Reddit. That is where I found Artifice to start with, and I had to find a subreddit to figure out how to do the coding for the symbols themselves. Deep Future has six suits. Since I'm using a magic card creation software, I had to adapt the suits that the game creator picked out, sun, heart, hand, moon, skull, and foot, I had to adapt them to match up with um, the magic symbols themselves. So I've actually used, uh, you, I think magic has five, red, blue, green, white, and black. Now that's only five, so I had to pick up one more symbol, and that subreddit helped me figure it out. So I'll, I'll talk a little bit about that momentarily. For now, um, this particular card, the Quest Tech card, has a suit of the red, and it is a five. So I'm going to type in the mana cost, and it's going to show up right up here. Um, five. Notice I'm using the curly braces. And uh, capital R, actually, is what you have to use. If you used a lowercase r, I do not think that it would show up, and it doesn't. So you do need to make sure that you use capitals when you're filling those in. Uh, what are some other symbols, you may ask, and here they are. Uh, this is one of the ones that I had to add in to the five. It's the sixth symbol, and I'm going to do it without talking. So B slash P, both capitals in curly braces. It turns out to be the symbol phi, and that is the black version. Magic, this is way past my years with magic, apparently has a whole suite of these particular symbols. There's a white version, 
There's a blue version. Um, I'm sure there's a red version. Yep, there it is. So I chose the black version of phi to be my sixth symbol, but you could pick whatever you wanted. In fact, you could use the different colors of phi throughout and just pick one of the standard magic symbols as your sixth. Totally up to you. It's your game. Um, this particular advance was Empire, so I'm going to throw that in there. The other symbols um, on this card were blue. Blue is a U, and that is because black is a B. And that's the little skull. That doesn't come up on this card. It actually has Empire on it. So my layout is, you know, colons, and then I'm, I'm going to throw in Astronomy was another tech. Advance, and the last advance was Biology. So the next thing that I wanted to do was distinguish the sort of flavor name of it, of the, each advance, to, to the actual action that you'd take in the game. And to do that, I wanted to make it italicized, so I had to learn about italicized coding. This may be completely common um, as part of HTML coding or the like, but I had no knowledge of it, so I had to do a little research. This I in the pointy brackets is how I indicate that I want to start my italicized text. This one has an action of power. And now I want to let it know that I want to stop my italicized text. To do that, you put in the forward slash with your eye. And then it closes it out. You'll notice I'm actually seeing what I'm doing. I'm seeing if I goofed up or not right there on the left-hand side of the screen. Uh, last little bit is what exactly does this advance do for me? It increases M by 1. Now, to save myself some time, I I'm just going to try to cut, copy, and paste. It gets real old typing in all of the pointy brackets. I'm sure you can imagine. So, throw in my expand, and throw in my grow. So, each one of these has its own particular advance that it's just associated with it. I'll actually write this one just so we can finish it off. Increase x by 1. All right. Uh... From there, I'm going to throw in, no, I'm not, you know, we have the option to throw in another space, and then maybe the font size, if we adjust it just a little bit up here in the corner, everything will squeeze down so that we can see it. And I'm having to go pretty small, but honestly, that's going to be visible on the cards. The quality that these print out is quite good, so I'm happy with that. I don't want that flavor text to be squished into biology, so I'm going to leave it like that. Um, easy enough to increase the font size back up again if I fill in biology and realize, oh no, that's too long. All right, the next thing that I'm worried about is I really wanted the color of each of my cards to be totally consistent. I wanted to, I didn't want to have a whole bunch of reds and blues and all of that other stuff. So if we go over to card setting in the middle part of the screen here, um, if this card was what magic qualifies as colorless, it gives me a nice um, neutral tan background. I really liked that. However, um, I wanted some kind of a visual nod to the particular suit of the card somewhere other than just this place at the top. So after fiddling around, I discovered if I called it a double color card, both white and red, when I click that white, it gives me that nice neutral tan background. It gives me that nod to the fact that the suit of this particular card is red. So that's how I'm going to go ahead and color it. My last job in creating this particular card, the quite unwieldy experimental, oops, sublimation torpedo, I'm noticing the torpedo bit is missing. So unfortunately, I'm going to have to go ahead and increase the font size back up again and get rid of my extra space. It's going to just end up being crunched in there a little bit, but I can live with that. All right, so the last thing that I want to do to prepare this card is to get myself some beautiful card art. Unfortunately, all of the art, well, I guess fortunately for me, all of the art that I get is culled from the internet, and there are brilliant creators of artwork who are, uh, uh, who have made their work available online. It's all personal use, though. The unfortunate bit is I cannot share my particular art. The best part about the internet, though, is if you are watching this, you have access to it, and you can find your own awesome art 
that appeals to your own personal aesthetic. So for, I remember, this is from the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. That's my universe this tech was created in. Uh, I created it for the Vogons who live on Vogue Sphere. I do not have a particular piece of artwork for this card picked out. So I'm just going to put in a placeholder, and that is the Vogue the Vogon Constructor Fleet ship coming in to destroy the Earth for the hyperspace expressway. So again, just a holding place. It doesn't actually relate to the torpedo. I'm sure I'll find a cool torpedo image eventually somewhere. You have the option to slide this left and right, whatever part of the picture you want to make sure you include. Here, you get the chance to zoom in if you have a picture of significantly better quality than the one that I've picked out. You can zoom in on a particular section and kind of get it just right as far as how you're laying it out on the card. Since this isn't the best of quality, I'm going to go ahead and put it back down to small. So that's it. I have managed to create the quest card that goes along uh, with the world Vogue Sphere that I won this particular era in. Um, you'll notice I've got my Era 5 tech here, the suit and the name of the particular tech. Let's go back to Vogue Sphere to kind of make a quick comparison. Here I've got the name of the world. I've got same thing, Era, but this time I've got the sector. And I do like to put flavor text on my worlds to kind of give me an idea of um, what sort of text I want to pick as I'm going through. So there's that. Uh, the last thing that I want to do then is I would like to create a PDF to print this out. I'm not actually going to print it, but I'll take a look at how this is going to work. So let me do a new... Yeah, good. Um, I want the settings to be not what I've fiddled around with at this point. So I'm actually just copying and pasting into this untitled set. And this is what it will look like for you when you start. And so I'll actually delete that and take a quick look. Delete. Yep. Okay. Yeah, so you have to have one card in it at least. So there's my quest card. And now I'm going to make a PDF to go along with it. If you head on up to set up here, two things that I like to check. I have not fiddled around too much with the other options. I like my cards to look as good as possible, and I print on a color laser printer. So the 600 dots per inch, I always select that one. That increases the quality of it. So it's set to 600 dots per inch. Whenever you make a new page, you want to make sure that you adjust that setting. And then export set is what we're going to do. So here, I could do individual PDF files, one PDF file per card, and use a different layout program if I didn't like the way this laid out. You can also export your cards as ping images. Um, the thing that we're going to do here, and what I've been doing for all of my cards, is exporting it as a paged PDF. And I'm just going to save it to the desktop so we can see it pop up. When you do a multi-page PDF file, it takes quite a while for it to render the images on the file. So this one's one card. Didn't make too, too much of a difference in terms of timing. So here it is. It is a six card per page layout. You'll notice from the cut lines that it's got full bleed on each one of the cards. There is no way to create a backing for this particular page. You have to do it by hand manually, which is... Um, not difficult considering each one of these cards is going to have exactly the same back. So I just, in Artifice itself, I program it, or I copy the same card out six times and then ask it to create a PDF that goes along with it. So the full bleed is awesome, lots of extra room, really not challenging to line up the back and front and then make your cuts after you spray them together, whatever your chosen method is. I think that is all I've got for you for Artifice. Um, no, well, a couple of, couple of small things. There are settings. You can change the border, if you like, to white, 
gold or silver. I really think the black looks sharp. I liked it. I use that on all of the cards. But if you wanted to have your worlds have a different border around them to distinguish them as you flip them, you could certainly do that. And I, oh, another couple of different card types. So I think um, one thing that I did was, let's, uh, let's use our S card as the example. So back at card information, I automatically used the standard template. However, as I complete civilizations, one thing that I like to do is distinguish those cards beyond just the color. So I pick Miracle, and that creates a really nice little starburst pattern behind them. And it does make the cards look special, which if you've managed to create a civilization, it is special. The last kind of card that I have used is once in my five eras, I have made a wonder. So I chose to use a transparent promo for that. So this particular picture probably isn't the best example of it. However, the quest itself, or sorry, the wonder itself, no flavor text, nothing fancy. I end up putting the name of the civilization and the particular winning um, suit here. So this would be the Vogon Empire. And then I've got my wonder and whatever area it was in. It, it doesn't have any of the mana costs or anything like that. When you've got a really nice galactic picture laid out in the background, it ends up looking really cool. So that's it. Transparent promo for wonders. And that's just a card to remind myself that a particular area on the board has a wonder in place. I use Miracle for the civilizations, and then everything else is just standard, changing it so the card setting has white clicked. One side note, if this was a white card, you would not want to have white picked over here. You'd actually want to put is all colors. And that way, although it doesn't have the little um, strip of white on here, it does match up the rest of your cards. So that's it! Hopefully this has been an instructive and not too wordy video. Thanks for stopping by and watching.